CTV. Uh, this is the Venture Capital TV from La Token, and my name is Sunny Mohanty. Hi, everybody. Uh, so this is Venture Capital TV from La Token. My name is Sunny Mohanty. Um, I'm the host and the moderator of the of the session today. And today we're going to discuss about investments in gaming uh, media on entertainment. This is a very interesting topic because gaming media entertainment has been making news a lot of news during this uh, time of lockdown uh, since last year so let's just hear from our speakers today uh, all those insights and trends that's happening in this space for 2021 and beyond so again uh, uh welcome welcome back on vctv and um, let's start the show by a quick round of introduction of all our speakers of the panel today Fantastic. Uh, so today I have um, Mark Lugo, who's joined us for the first time on a VCTV Asia episode. So just let's just start with him, Mark. Hi, Mark. Welcome to VCTV Asia. A little bit of introduction and background about yourself, please. Good morning, Sunny. I'm originally from New York City. Uh, I started my entertainment career in Miami in about nine, 1993, 1992, more or less right after Hurricane Andrew. Uh, working on a uh, on a uh, charity concert in uh, in Miami, right after Hurricane Andrew, I decided I liked the entertainment space and stayed uh, doing concerts for about ten to eleven years. Opened up an advertising company that was a mobile advertising company that was basically mobile trucks running around New York City, and then we expanded to other cities like Los Angeles, Miami, different cities. We had uh, we had a presence in about 13 US cities. This was in the early, early, early 2000s, right? Right when the uh, when the web crash happened. So most of our our uh, our clients were were dot coms. So we took a we took a bath in that. So we've seen this happen before. And uh, I've been in entertainment ever since. Uh, got into gaming about 2012 with some companies out in Barcelona. Moved to Barcelona, lived there for a while, and been in entertainment, gaming, worked with all the major artists of, of the world, mainly in the Latin and hip hop spaces. So, I mean, I, I like what's happening in entertainment now, and I like what's happening in the world today, just to, to kind of retrospect in what you said at and the intro that the world is really moving towards a, an e-sport and e-gaming last year at this time i was actually watching television and i was watching the only sport that was on tv was tetris <laughs> so, <laughs> at least we're moving towards a better space now so now there's uh, yeah. sports there's um, some capacity inside the sports in the u.s side so I mean, the world is different today, but I think we're we're making some progress. So it's Perfect. good to see you all. Wow, Mark, thank you and welcome to VCTV. Wow, what a journey so far thus far. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us today. Next uh, time, nice, Lance. Nice to be here. Thank you. Lance, over to you, please. Hey guys, this is Lance from Gamer Force Ventures. Um, we are an early stage venture capital firm. Um, headquarter in Singapore, uh, triple headquarter in Singapore, UK and the US. Um, we mainly invest in um, esports and gaming companies, specifically those that are uh, empowered in what we call the um, picks and shovels, right? Uh, what we mean by that is basically you're looking at platforms, software, um, data analytics. Um, these are the kind of companies that we're looking at mainly. Right now raising a $10 million fund um, Thought it was pretty interesting i was just reading this um so before that i was actually in the cloud computing space so a very different um strategy back then so um we're leveraging on our knowledge of cloud um our knowledge about um software as a service business models uh platforms as a service business models um in order to create that kind of um work uh the kind of value for our startups um and for the gaming ecosystem in general. Yeah, so happy to share any deals offline. 
Wow. Thank you, Lance. And good to know about your uh, past as well, like what which industry you belong to before. Awesome. And welcome back. Uh, welcome back. I think it's been a while since you are on BCTV. You were on BCTV a really, really long time back, I think last year. And uh, I'm glad that you're back as well. Uh, okay, yeah, next time. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> Great. Next, I have uh, Katik. Hi, Katik. Over to you, please, with your Hi. quick intro and background. Thank you so much. And uh, this is the 101st time with you. So that's that's special. 101 episodes with all of you, and it's, it's been beautiful. I represent Adventure HQ and Idea Factory from the Middle East, uh, primarily into e edutech, health tech, adventure sports, sports tech, game tech, etc. And uh, represent a couple of family offices as well as uh, a venture fund. Right, fantastic. Uh, next, I have Kingsley. Hi, Kingsley. Welcome back. Good to see you back. Yeah, good evening from Tokyo. Uh, my name is Kingsley Kobayashi. I'm a serial entrepreneur and an investor. Uh, invest in commercial real, uh, real estate. Uh, I have a particular company. So I'm into uh, healthcare innovations, payment system, blockchain, crypto, and uh, and that include me and uh, media entertainment that i'm investing into so i've been in tokyo for 30 years and uh it's good to be here again sony thank you for having me today fantastic thank you kingsley always a pleasure to have you on dctv uh next i have tushar hi tushar how are you i'm good sunny nice nice to be back on the show with you today um so i uh, represent consultancy ventures uh, we are into uh, venture capital investments in technology companies uh, and uh, I am also venture partner with the uh, five uh, venture capital funds uh, and many of them do have a focus on gaming, media and entertainment. The sector has been booming and it's very interesting to be discussing this today on this panel. So glad to be back, Sam. Thank you. Thank you, Tushar. And always, uh, you know, Good to have you on BCTV on these panels. Uh, Hash, over to you, please. How are you, Hash? You well, you can't hear you. We can't hear you, Hash. Okay. Can you hear me now? Better. Lot lot better. Yeah. Perfect. Sir. So um, doing well, thanks, and uh, especially during current times of COVID, where India has gone into lockdowns again. So overall, I can say I cannot complain. So, just a short background about myself. Uh, my name is Rosh I am a venture partner with our ventures. Also a founder with Startup Hackers. Uh, we essentially help early stage startups grow, grow their business uh, domestically as well as internationally and help them raise funds. Uh, we have a very... Sorry? Someone's what? having an early morning. Yes. Early morning. Yeah. I'm a big A rooster. <laughs> <I'm a smug. laughs> Who is in the farmland? A farmhouse. I love this. Yeah. Countryside enjoying. Oh. <laughs> what are we here? Chicken? Hush, I think you probably need to prop. Uh, you know your vo vo voice is a little uh, low, and we can hear okay. hear some background noise as well. <laughs> got it, got it. So I'll try to be as loud as I can. So um, yeah. uh, uh, I'm a founder of Startup Hackers, uh, venture partner with Our Ventures. Uh, we've done over sixty plus investments. In all all kinds of sectors, fintech, health tech, SaaS, media, etc. Uh, right now, we are uh, typically focusing on all kinds of tech companies. And just last year, we invested in a company called Horses Productions, which was into the media space and which kind of hosted India's own Shark Tech kind of a format, uh, which was done last year. And we had some notable investors in the part of, part of that panel as well. So, looking forward to some in interesting discussion today. Thank you and welcome back, uh, Hush. Uh... So I think hours in the meantime, we can fix your little connections and probably the background noise. Thank you so much, uh, uh, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us on this panel today. So as an opening remarks, uh, I'd like to start with Mark. Mark, where is this? Who is this then? It's, it's not me. I still hear that toaster noise. But anyways, so coming up, coming. You don't hear you still, man. <laughs> can, can everyone else please mute? Yeah, I'm mute. I put you on mute, Hash, for, for the time being while I take the question from Mark. Mark, Ooh. gaming and media, what are the new trends, a new innovation that we see in the space for 2021 and entertainment? 
Uh, whew. I don't know. I think we see a lot of uh, digital. Uh, I announced on my last show, uh, right after Tiger Woods had a uh, an accident. I think this was last month of February, and I said Tiger Woods could still play in a PGA Tour. And about a month, about a week later, he announced that he was going to play in a digital PGA Tour. So he's recovering at home, and he's still he's still uh, he's still be able to play in the digital version of what he does. So I mean, uh, I think uh, because of the pandemic, the sports industry specifically, and not so much the entertainment industry, the uh, music entertainment. Music industry, uh, entertainment has gone virtual. So now you have uh, artists is like uh, Mark Anthony and some other guys that are doing uh, virtual tours. So, I mean, the space has just gone into like emergency mode. I hope it's not the normal because I think as a society, we need to, to, to be together at some point in time. We can't just be all in our homes like a Wally movie or whatever where everything's digital. I think we need to be together. And um, so I don't know. I, I think I think everything's just kind of going digital. Uh, entertainment's kind of being supported by blockchain now and by crypto. And so, I mean, there's a lot of fusions going on. I think it's going in a lot of different directions, but I think the direction is basically esports and virtual. You just kind of as a backup so that this doesn't happen again, because if most of the the major leagues in the U.S. at least, I can't speak on Asia, but if most of the uh, U.S. leagues were on to eSports like Europe was, it would, it, the, entertain, the, the sports entertainment business would have not taken the hit that it took during the initial part of the pandemic. So I think it's just a digital thing. I mean, I'm not going crazy. I'm not a trend guy, and I've said this on a lot of shows with Kyle. I don't like to follow trends and everybody's doing something at the same time. It's not really what what I like to do. I kind of like to see what's going to happen next. So, I mean, I think what's going to happen next is that most of the major leagues in the U.S. are going to definitely focus towards esports, kind of almost like they focus on the live sports. And, and the funny thing about live sports in the U.S. is that it was suffering anyway. So, I mean... It wasn't like you, every game is full in Yankee Stadium. And I say Yankee Stadium because when I was growing up in the Bronx, mostly Yankee Stadium was sold out. People were always wanting to be in Yankee Stadium. And now you can get a ticket for, you know, 30 bucks or whatever. So things are changing. <laughs> yeah, definitely it's digital. I think everybody, be it entertainment, media, gaming, I mean, everything is moving digital. And we have all adapted ourselves, I would say, in the in this last year uh, to uh, play games online rather than go stadium and do all the stuff that we do before. Thank you so much, uh, Mark, for those opening remarks. Uh, I move next to, next I move to Tatik with his opening remarks, please. So uh, the gaming industry, I think in the last 12 months has uh, grown manifolds. What's changed is, uh, like Mark was talking about, most of the sports have come on uh, online in the online space. But esports primarily has become a mainstay. What started with a small phenomenon in Far East has now taken the Middle East by rage. Today we have sport tournaments, we have sport rallies, we have multiplayer gaming to access, uh, events. We have become franchisees and we've got license houses that host these gaming events. Telecom providers have created massive bandwidths to support these gaming activities. Merchandises have been created. What PUBG did a year and a half ago with PUBG stores is what's becoming a common phenomenon. Gamification and tokenization of the games have, have begun, which necessarily creates a very strong reward basket around it. In-app advertisements and reason for people to download these games and then continue work building and add revenue around it has become a mainstream revenue stream. Social gaming has become something as, as a trend. But more importantly, what's happening is a lot of artificial intelligence and hyper-personalizations coming in both in the gaming space as well as in the entertainment space. Moving on to entertainment, if you see what Netflix has done or what uh, Amazon Prime has done in terms of content creation, content curation, is now moving on to a very strong vernacularization of content, very strong AI-based algorithms, which creates a very strong, a very re real-time on-demand curation and on-demand censorship of content. Then last Netflix uh, template, 
which was about piloting censorship modules. Also, simultaneously, content has moved from conventional content or entertainment into a very small snackable bit by bit uh, consumption content, which is what TikTok's popularizing over the period of time. And hence, the online time typically, which is non-official online time, which used to be around 27 to 28 minutes in 2014-15, has gone up to as high as 170 minutes for an individual. So it's gone up by six times. Practically every human being on an average, what Apple published last week, is about six hour 47 minutes is on his iPhone every day out of 24 hours. Now that is astounding. That's that's what gaming's done. Last month I heard about one of the sponsors of a Jordanian tournament who created a six million jackpot for a winner of an esport competition. Fifty years ago, Wimbledon winners were not given six million. So if somebody wins six million by playing an EK esport after three rounds, then then the worlds move differently. So I think the entire space is is uh, moving fast. A lot of startups in this space, a lot of interest in this space, a lot of consumption of media online. Handphones become the harbinger of this entire consumption story. And hence, uh, as an investor or as a, as a startup incubator or even as a venture or, or as a family office investor, I see this as a space where I would love to be in for, for some more time. Right. So just quickly, just wanted to add, because I just got a question offline, where do gaming and casinos fall into game, uh, you know, gambling, sorry, gambling and casinos fall into this gaming space so depending on what jurisdictions allow certain jurisdictions allow online gaming certain jurisdictions don't but it falls definitely into the online gaming space but then there is a very fine line of validation and very fine line of authenticity in that space so certain geographies definitely do not allow which is why gamification is moving from dollar currency into crypto which is held in offshore uh, geographies and hence a lot of other gaming platforms are able to legalize it through crypto so yes, it is it is becoming, especially card-based gambling, wheel-based gambling, and online event or chance-based gambling is something becoming a trend, specifically in Far East, specifically in Southeast Asia. Subcontinent has very strong regulations in all the three countries. Middle East would never allow it. Latin America has seen a very strong uh, uh, rise, specifically in Brazil. So yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Kartik, for that. So next move, next move to Lance. Lance, what's your opening remarks about the new trends and new innovation uh, in gaming, uh, media, uh, and entertainment? Sure. Um, so just to say, uh, recently I was just reading a couple of reports uh, coming in from various sources, and what we see is a shift towards um, cloud-based gaming. We do see, uh, but I think... In that sense, the challenge for cloud-based gaming is how you are able to, uh, how, how well they can deploy the technology in terms of um, the latency side, right? Um, I do see that 5G will be something that will empower that ecosystem, right? Um, uh, you are talking about, so today, uh, so one of the reports was just saying that for cloud, cloud gaming, um, it's projected to have 5.1, uh, 5.1 uh, 5 billion dollars um, as a market size by 2023 uh, is one of the fastest growing side uh, of things. The other thing that I'm looking at is um, games going mobile, right? High-end games going mobile where you have AAA titles that are starting to um, leverage on infrastructure, right? Um, such as um, the cloud and 5G. Um, eventually, I do see VR might come into the picture, uh, but not at this point. The other, the other side of it is a lot of data analytics. Um, we have um, evaluated um, at least five to seven companies within the past, couple, uh, past two months, all on data analytics for games. Um, one's doing for Steam and the Steam engine, one's doing it for mobile, some of them are doing it for the peripherals, such as esports marketing, entertainment marketing, influencer marketing. We've evaluated views like these, and we believe that um, with the power of artificial intelligence, that would give um, brands and um, sponsors a better view about their return on investments. Um, on the blockchain side of things, we believe that, um, like I think Karthik mentioned earlier, um, gambling, um, and not just that, on top of that, I think there are a couple of um, deals that we are looking at today um, that are building games on top of blockchain, uh, such as Lightning Network. So um, I do think that these fundamental technologies 
will eventually um, bring gaming and ent- entertainment and media to the next level. Yeah. Oh, yes, perfect. I think you're right. Cloud-based, blockchain-based, and crypto on the top um, is a fantastic use case of uh, gaming as well. Thank you so much, Lance. Uh, next, I have Kingsley. Yeah, hello, good evening. Yeah. Uh, thanks, the pandemic. The world will never be uh, the way we know it. Uh, when I was growing up, we used to play in the grass, you know, run around the house, go around the bus play, but that is not to be anymore. Uh, gaming is changing and uh, we have to adapt to it. And uh, some of the things that are allowing to happen is you have digital pay system that make it easy uh, to do gaming online. You have uh, different platforms that are helping to, to make that happen. Then you have uh, smartphones. Uh, every kid right, right now have a smartphone, so is promoting gaming uh, with, 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 within the Gen Zs and the millennials. So the, the, the future that we are looking at is a future of people who are going to be doing esports, learning sports, going to be doing gaming online. So it would be wrong for anybody not to try to invest into it because, for example, we all used to go to Vegas if we wanted to play, we want to gamble, do whatever. That has shifted. Yeah. It has shifted. I've, I've not been to Vegas for the last two years. And I want to be, I want to go to Vegas, but since I don't have that option, the option is to go into online gaming. Depending on which country you are, which region you are, the relations are different. So that is why blockchain and digital payment is playing a very big role. So you have people who, who does cyber gaming, just you play the game like like like, like Max said. But right now you have kids who have different kind of games on their computers. You know, my my son have a computer like seven thousand dollars. Like, like, what do you need that for? He does two and he's already on the game. So it has become the way of social interaction for them because they don't have. I want to go to Mr. John's house, Mr. Peter's house to play with the kids. That is out of the question right now. So the way we can socialize with others is through gaming. That is interaction on on the social side. Then you also have gamers who do it professionally. You know, we are going to 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 to. to his, a stage where we are able to watch people playing basketball on on, on on multi platforms at the same time and you have fans who are watching them so these are things that ai can do these are things that we are looking into investing in uh, heavily because when that happens the whole game is going to change because i don't see the pandemic allowing people to interact the way they used to interact before which is very sad honestly because the human touch is out but at least the gaming is going to provide a platform for our children and our children to engage with others socially, which is missing right now. So when it comes to gaming, when it comes to uh, uh, entertainment, uh, it has gone up so high because of what's going on. Because you can make a movie inside one room and just change yeah. the scenery. You know, you are, you are making the same movie, but you, you change the scenery, you change the, 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 the position of the chair, position of the bed, and you already, you know, it has given us that we, can, we, we don't have to move to a different country or a different venue to make a movie or to, to make something uh, happen. So the adaptation of, uh, of humans to what is happening right now is, is, the, is the ripple effect that is going to happen later in life. We don't have people that are no longer interacting, yes. If you are an investor in gaming, it's an opportunity. But in real life, like Mark said, we're going to miss those things. But our children will not be used to it anyway because they're already used to be on the game. You know, they play games every day. So investing in gaming is a big deal. So I'm investing in gaming seriously, whether it's casual gaming, whether it's professional gaming. These platforms are going to be the next uh, generation to make money. Sure. I think we have lost. Thank you, Kingsley, for those insights. Lovely. I'm just a little bit distracted. We've lost uh, Kathik because of some, I don't yeah, know, connection. Net, net, network, yes. Yeah. Yes. So, Tushar, can we go next with you and then Harsh? Yeah. So, I uh, concur with uh, a lot of what uh, the panelists have been saying on entertainment and specifically gaming. I feel that uh, you know the biggest uh, entertainment trends uh, which have taken shape will intensify further in uh, 2021, and that's where the opportunity lies. I mean, just look at uh, social video 
uh, TikTok, uh, you know, pioneered it in a sense, although YouTube has been around since donkey's years, but uh, TikTok made it fashionable uh, and especially the small, small time videos. And now Facebook is trying to, uh, to you know, build a mark uh, in that field. And, uh, you know, uh, I was walking by a park uh, in the city and I remember, you know, uh, almost the whole park was full with uh, youngsters uh, making TikTok videos and uh, you know uh, the advent of uh, internet has uh, you know easy availability of internet the crashing of rates has led to deepening of uh, the usage of uh, this service then you know I feel that uh, more streaming services will come out and uh, the, nowadays uh, companies are building communities uh, by streaming relevant video from their social social media handles and uh, this trend will in, uh, intensify and uh, uh, you know over the top or ott streaming services have been you know in india uh, we have different languages i see uh, regional language ott companies coming up almost every week or every month and uh, so that trend has intensified again uh, cloud gaming will go mainstream uh, and uh, you know uh, it has been intensifying, and uh, that is one trend which uh, which will continue to happen. Uh, then esports are gaining momentum, uh, and as Karthik said in Dubai, uh, it does not uh, hold so much in India because uh, of the COVID restrictions. But uh, east esports is here to stay. In, uh, two of my clients uh, who were looking for investment and I was consulting them. Uh, they have their uh, esports businesses and doing quite well. So uh, I, I, you know, I have uh, this uh, whole examples in front of me. Then uh, podcasting will become a mainstream medium. Uh, you know, it's a, uh, almost 120 million people uh, listen to podcasts, uh, uh, you know, at least once per month in 2021 and in the US alone. So it will become mainstream. And uh, I think uh, also that uh, uh, there has been a movement towards creating new, spro uh, new sports, like uh, bike packing, uh, like uh, fitness, uh, within fitness, there are many, uh, you know, it's a creation of uh, uh, new sports, uh, which uh, the trend has been going, uh, going along. So these are my views uh, on entertainment trends uh, as of now. Yeah, so Tushar, yeah. remember you were, can please, can can you put your hand? So uh, Tushar, remember you were on an NFT panel before. So what do you think? Is NFT going to be a use case on all this gaming, entertainment, media industry? I mean, just quickly. So, you know, monetizing any creative work, whether it is on the sports side, entertainment side, uh, it has uh, uh, been uh, as difficult as uh, coming out with an IPO where you have to deal with the sophisticated investment bankers and a lot of financial regulations. So, you know, a lot of creative uh, people who I, when I speak in colleges and uh, platforms of different colleges, so the arts uh, community, the student community, they, they, you know, ask about how to monetize their creative work. Now, definitely it was not easy because how many can uh, sell, auction a painting at Sotheby's, uh, you know, so it's uh, it's not easy. So if you have to monetize your creative work, if you have to monetize something new, something uh, which you have created, uh, then NFT is a very viable way. Just like a JPEG uh, painting was sold for 70 million, uh, NFT was sold for 70 million uh, dollars. Uh, so, you know, I feel that... Uh, this medium will grow only big uh, in the time to come. Yeah, thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. Uh, next, I have Harsh. Thank you, Tushar. Yeah, so, uh, oh, uh, Harsh, we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Is it better? Is it better now? Yeah, yeah you, I think the, the voice is not very clear. It was low volume, but you can try. You can try. So I kind of agree with what Mark and Kingsley kind of pointed out over here. Right? It's going to be a sad state of affairs when most of the physical sports kind of shift completely online. Uh, just uh, yesterday, 
we had a wrestlemania you know double lui black to prevent the player was so they had some mental but mostly it was completely on time we have ipl which is starting in india right now where they are not attend are not allowing attendees inside the stadiums however people can still see it online right so that is that could be a difficult in the longer run uh, i you know one of my friends uh, son we just was speaking with him yesterday he was playing minecraft on his uh, phone on a cell phone right and he was telling us that you know uh, how how did your generation kind of have fun because we have internet we have all these online games what did your generation do to, do to have fun <laughs> these amazing things so because we didn't have a pandemic we didn't probably i don't know i never had a i i didn't see a pandemic of this sort when i was young <laughs> i personally think for him but he feels bad for us that we did not have access to that kind of technology it's really amazing you know how the number of people shifted the way perceptions are and how it feels right is harsh harsh you're not audible actually uh, what about others do you can you guys hear harsh kill uh, clearly or is it just me no no i i can't hear i can only hear the wrestlemania part of it which interests me so i could hear yeah. the wrestlemania part of it from him harsh are you using a phone or a laptop i'm using my phone because uh, yeah i laptop. think you have to change uh, while we take because we can't hear you actually <laughs> let me try something else yes please try something okay. else while we take Thank you. Thank you. Great. Uh, so talking about so this industry, this three industries, uh, gaming, media, entertainment, I think they are all sort of interlinked and interdependent um, in some ways or the other. Because so let's talk about media and entertainment industry, how it has panned out post uh, COVID, post pandemic, because media entertainment, I think Mark would agree, is not the same. Uh, as before um so while netflix and amazon prime has taken over um so and there are less good calls to the theaters because i was in the in the um, downtown city center and i could see all those theaters uh still i mean even though there is a lot of uh, measures in place by the government for self, for safe distancing but i see the theaters still empty so i think the future of media and industry uh, media and entertainment industry is has been disrupted a big time so let's just hear from mark uh, what the, so how has it panned out post the pandemic mark let me yeah, yeah. okay there you go now i got to start all over i think what's happening here is that uh, i think the media like the players in the game are kind of blaming the pandemic but i think this problem was was here before the pandemic and i think it's the economy i think the pandemic and this is my my opinion i think that the whole pandemic is a geopolitical event the to kind of push the digital world kind of that's what's happening maybe it's not by uh it's probably not intentional but it's probably happening by default but we've had we've had a problem in entertainment uh for the last 10 or 15 years i mean the, we have uh in gaming in sports in media everything we have a problem and it's cost saturation i mean uh i know we've all had this problem when we go to netflix and we spend 2 hours trying to figure out which movie we're going to see and then we're sleepy and then we go to sleep we didn't watch no movie all we saw was which movie we're going to watch and the same things happening with sports i mean now i can watch uh ufc in sweden or i can watch ufc on demand in los angeles from 1999 or whatever not that ufc was around in 1999 but i mean there's a lot to choose from now and now there's more to choose from because now everybody's a producer everybody's a film entertainer like like uh, a filmmaker like kingsley said so i mean how do we choose our content which which way are we going to choose our content and it's interesting because netflix found that now they're going to choose the the content for you in latin america because people are just spending 2 hours looking at what what movie they're going to watch and it's not it's not becoming fun for them so they need to push the movies that they want to to their latin american uh users if you will So I mean there's a lot of things happening now but I think most of what's happening now is that there's really no structure before there used to be a structure like 
Okay. Hey, the movie starts at 5.30. We need to get there at 4.45. It's going to take us 15 minutes to buy popcorn and wearing the seats at 5.10. Five minutes of previews or whatever. And then we watch the movie for an hour and a half. And then we go home or we go buy pizza. And right now the world is really, it's too, too much on demand. So games are on demand. Everything's on demand now. And everybody can get it, and there's a lot of content. So, I mean, I see everybody saying, invest, 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 invest. I would invest in what brings structure to the madness because it's a lot of madness going on now. I mean, I got I to gotta choose on April 17th if I'm going to watch the game online. Am I going to watch the Mark Anthony concert online? Am I going to go watch the 1996 NBA on demand uh, whatever happened in 1999, whatever happened. I mean, there's a lot of things that are happening now. I could even webcam to watch, you know, a zoo in South Africa if I want to. So, I mean, it, it all depends what you want to watch. I mean, I've been homeschooling both of my sons for years, and now homeschool is popular, and I get so many questions about homeschooling. My son is 12 years old. Well, he's 13 now, but he speaks five languages. He's been to 60 countries. I mean... So, I mean, I get a lot of homeschooling questions now because homeschooling is, is popular. Some people are homeschooling correctly and some people are homeschooling, in my opinion, incorrectly. So, I mean, yeah. that's what's happening in entertainment. That's what's happening in media. That's what's happening in gaming. That's what's happening in everything. I know some of the premier gamers that have been around in esports for, for 20 years, for 22 years, and they don't even understand what's going on. Now you have guys that are been in the space for a year and a half or two years and they they seem to to know all the answers and i'm like yo i know people i've sat in karate games with gerard piquet and his team and they they were doing esports 10 years ago in barcelona yeah. and they 10, 20 years ago they had esports cafes where people were going to cafes all over spain and play esports so esports is not new it's just new to a lot of people like bitcoin is not new I've sat in meetings in 2014 talking about Bitcoin when Bitcoin was about 35 cents. And now everybody <laughs> talks to me about Bitcoin. NFT is not new. Bitcoin is not new. None of that. And if anybody's been in the entertainment space as long as I've been, we know that it's been licensing all along. And we've always known that it was going to be digital because the, the, the thing about doing a concert in 1999 is that you want to you wanna record it because you recorded it and then you sold it on VHS, and then you sold it on DVD, all these things that people don't even know what a VHS is. If I ask my son what a VHS is, he doesn't know. If I ask him what a home phone is, he doesn't know either. He speaks five languages, 60 countries, he doesn't know what a home phone is. He doesn't know what a VHS is. So, I mean, I think there's a, I think we had a really, really, really hard hit where it separated the old from the new, and people think that the new is really new, but the new is really not new. The new's been here. The new's been here for a long time, but I think a lot of people are just kind of, that's what we need to invest in because that's what the narrative is. But the narrative has always been entertainment. I mean, the Coliseum was built for what? For entertainment. So the Coliseum is how, how, how many years old? Two, two, 200, uh, 2,300 years old or whatever. So, I mean, entertainment has been around for a long time. It's just changing now and everybody's interested in becoming part of that space because now it's easy to become famous. When I started my career in entertainment, I used to have to send UPS, FedEx, faxes, everything just to contact an, uh, an entertainer and say, hey, you want to work with me? Now, hush, hush with his phone and a back connection, he can call Mark Anthony and say, hey, I'm going to offer you $200,000 to do a show in, in Singapore. It's that easy now. <laughs> So, I mean, it's just different now. And, I mean, people know me from the from the Kyle shows. I, I say what's on my mind, and I talk because I can I, – I've been in this space for a long time, and I know some of the, the real players that are really doing it, not just acting the part. So, I mean, you have a lot of people acting the part now. So, I mean, it's interesting to watch because I like to be an observer and say, ah, oh, this guy's going to fall flat on his face. And, I mean, we talk about the Netflix. We talk about the YouTube. But let's talk about Meg Meg Whitman, the lady from eBay, right? Yeah. She started she started a, a streaming company. She raised two billion dollars. She lasted four or five months. It was called Quimby, right? We yeah. saw about we saw Quimby. When did we see Quimby the first time? We saw them run ads during the Super Bowl, 
in 2019. So they knew the pandemic was coming, but they didn't know how to manifest that pandemic. And with $2 billion, they lasted four months. How do you do something that, how do you do something that bad and with so much experience? I mean, she was eBay, right? She was the CEO of eBay. She went to be on the CEO of HP. How do you screw up $2 billion in four months? Give me that chance and I'll share with Kinsley and a whole bunch of people out here. Because I mean, how do, how do you mess up $2 billion in four months on a streaming service during a pandemic? How does that happen? Wow. Because people are getting into spaces they don't know. A very, very interesting and uh, points. And Harsh, you're on a phone and a bad connection. You have to fix it ASAP. <laughs> right now, the connection is good. Problem is he, there's lots of rain. He can, st he can still make a deal with that bad phone, though. That's the beauty of it. <laughs> there you the problem go. Is there is, problem is there's lots of rain going on right now. Probably that's where the difference is. Okay, cool. Uh, jokes Any apart, I think Mark... No, it's still very low. I think your volume, the, the clarity is better, the volume is low. I think Mark touched upon very good points, very practical points coming to Netflix. You know, I think I, I'm the one who browses for nearly one hour thinking which one to watch, which, which, which. Is it a movie? Is it a series? Is it a thriller? Is it a suspense? Is it family? There's so many genres out there, like so many things there. So I, I agree with Mark. I keep on browsing and I just don't watch anything at the end. <laughs> Mark, Mark, Mark just laid it down the way it is. You know, no, no, no continent, he just laid it down the way it is. I love that. Thank you, Mark. That's good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I, I love that. Uh, yeah, Mark same made an interesting point regarding on demand, right? If you look at it overall, right now everything is on demand. And that is why I believe the success of Clubhouse has been. Clubhouse has been, you either have to join the conversation and you lose out on it completely, right? It is that exclusivity that you have to be at that point, at that point of time. Only then can you join the conversation. It kind of adds a value to it. It kind of adds some exclusivity to it. I, I believe that is what you know, Clubhouse has done very well. And that's why Clubhouse was, you know, is growing that well in terms of the audience and news. Because there is something that you know we look forward that we need to attend it at that point of time only. It just used to be like those blockbusters, you know. You have Star Wars, which is releasing. So the people line up for the tickets to get that first show. The, the value of that, the premium of that cannot be underrated. That is what Clubhouse is doing. And that is probably why uh, I believe that's the hidden secret of why Clubhouse is doing so well compared to all the other social media platforms. Yeah, in a way, correct. But I'm also like, you know, I had enough of Clubhouse. <laughs> I don't know what next. As Mark said, that it's not structured. This play, this place, this space is not structured. It has to be structured. Before it was structured, he's so right. Before we used to plan, this is the time it takes to reach a theater. Then we have to pop buy popcorn. We have to buy Coke and all that stuff. Then you have to find our seats. Then sit down and watch a movie uh, for how many uh, minutes? It's got to do. It's, it's got to do with our behavioral tendencies. We as beings. We as human beings are li like others to structure us. While today we have an amazing opportunity of structuring everything as per our requirement. Imagine gaming happens on your convenience, work happens at your convenience, movies happen at on demand. You are you're free to choose everything that you like. But the very fact that we are conditioned to be governed by forces of nature is where we fall apart and figure out that, okay, this is not something we're used to. It's exactly the way, we, the, the way somebody migrates from a school to a college. In school, you're made to sit and learn. In college, you have a choice to learn whether you wish to or not, and which is where people squander off. So we were going through an evolution, and I think this evolution is here to stay for a while. I think so. When the preferable is, is not available, the available becomes preferable. It doesn't mean it is right. You know, yeah. what, 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 what we are missing is that we are unable to transfer our tradition and culture to our children. Right. That is, there's, that a, is, there's a very that, strong generation. That's the that big part that is, is going to be missing. Like he said, okay, how did how did we play when we were young? We play on the field. We go around the house. We go. Every, no, we did these things, but our children don't have that opportunity. So they have to make do with what they have. Most of the time, even when you find a movie that you think you like, you watch it halfway. You're like, ah, I don't like this. And you change a different movie. It happens for every one of us. But, it has, but yes. the, the truth, the truth is, at this moment in time, this is what is available to them. How do we make better? We hope the pandemic is over in a year or two, hopefully. 
I don't think it's going to be over this year. We're having the Olympics in, in Tokyo, and no, no, no spectators are allowed from abroad. I don't think that is uh, Olympics, but we are making do with what we have. So everybody has become an expert in gaming. Uh, even my son does gaming at home and say, okay, daddy, I'm going to put it on YouTube. I'm like, okay, go ahead, put it, put it on YouTube. That's very good. So they, they are not making money easily. And easy money, people want to go into it. There's no, there's no stress involved in it. You can play the game and just, and just play the game. You don't have to read about it. You don't have to... No, people used to memorize the script for a movie. Now you don't memorize it. You just, you just, you just take your phone and you, you say something you go in there and, and that's it. So we are seeing more, more relaxed situation. But, but that does not mean that for now, we invest in what is available and we hope that this is not the norm in future. We can go back to what we do best. Hopefully, we all wish that. Thank you, Kingsley, for sharing your insights. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, uh, Mark, I'm going to come to you. Let's take quick uh, insights from Lance and Tushar. Lance? We, you sure, are uh, mute. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. We do? Yeah. So um, I, think, I think Mark brought up a couple of really, really good points in the sense that um, a lot of these technologies that we see today are not new. Artificial intelligence has been there ever since the 1980s, right? So, um, the, or at least the first version of it. Now, here's the, here's the challenge, right? Um, for any adoption of any new, uh, new um, technologies, and I'm just going to share my screen for a bit. Um, let's see. Let me pull this up. Yeah, can you see my screen? Yeah, no, so... We um, we do not see your screen, but you can carry on presentation. Oh, okay. What's this? Yeah, we do. Wow. Who are these people? Yeah, so the thing is, um, how I look at this entire situation right now is um, when there's a new technology that comes out, right? So, for example, back then was blockchain or earlier was artificial intelligence or even the internet. Um, at the start, we expect so much, right? We expect that this will change the world and all that. Right, so this the blue curve is actually showing us our expectations. The red curve is actually the reality of the technology itself. Now, here's the thing, right? Um, when we first started out a new technology or a new trend, um, or whatever, um, it starts off where we get disappointed because uh, what we, uh, the technology couldn't do what we expected. But then, uh, as time goes by, we expect lesser and lesser. But yet, the technology keeps improving. So it hits a certain point, which uh, we like to call the iPhone moment, right? Which um, is where a lot of these um, new technologies start to take off, right? So we keep talking about blockchain. We keep talking about artificial intelligence. Look, here's the thing. Um, these guys have already crossed this point. Um, and now we are just, our expectations are just catching up to what can be done with these um, technologies or these trends. Right. So similarly, um, like uh, now the, the challenge is how do we structure the um our expectations and what we have today, right? To match to keep up with the uh, pace of technological change, right? Um. So I think it's the same same situation that the media industry is going to face, um, over the next couple of years. Um, it's going to be the same situation that uh, even gaming companies are going to face. Um, so uh, entertainment is going to face the same thing. I mean, iFlix, which is a copy of Netflix in Southeast Asia, um, actually was bought at a loss, right? For, uh, according uh, based on the previous round, right? So here's the thing: how do we ensure that we are able to structure this in such a way that people can accept it, but yet um, it gives uh, it gives us structure to our lives, but yet it doesn't feel to imposing right so i think that is the next challenge for the next um media unicorn to solve i think you're right i really like that uh, curve that you just shared with the viewers and the speakers thank you lance for doing that tushar over to you please next so sunny i would like to say that uh, it's been almost uh, seven years for me and uh, the rise of gaming entertainment and media it's astonishing and especially after COVID and uh, although media in some sense, the print media has been going down because of COVID uh, and, you know, uh, because of distribution bottlenecks, 
um, the some of the other platforms are not performing so well but uh, by and large uh, you know uh, the the uh, this uh, the, the type of platforms are changing but uh, end of the day the consumption is growing up uh, so you know i would uh, uh, i would welcome uh, entrepreneurs and investors uh, who would uh, want to align with me uh, i i can uh, help uh, get them access to funding equity funding from angels from vcs from family offices and uh, i'm always available on linkedin and please feel free to reach out tk at consultancy.com that's my email id and uh, happy to uh, uh, get uh, uh, funding done for this exciting industry thank you thank to shar thank you to shar for that uh, so on that note i want to ask because obviously we are a platform to connect uh, you know, investors startups incubators on one platform vctv but what are the success parameters i would like to know like uh, as mark said I and mean, everybody sort of agree that there's this that this there's a lot of content out there and we are all getting sort of um how to put it like we we we're loving zoom at one point of time as a medium of uh, you know communication now stream app because of a lot of other functionalities i don't know you know after this what else is going to be there uh, probably i don't know some ar vr plat based platform streaming platform <laughs> who knows what's what's in there so uh what i was asking so to be sustainable in this space what are the parameters uh, needed for success when it comes to startups um mark you're on mute mark you're on mute not me yeah okay. you keep doing this to me sonny you keep getting <laughs> my emotions up and then i can't <laughs> I got to go back into <laughs> mark mode, right? Okay. I think what's happening is that uh what you just did. I mean, you were used to you were accustomed to Zoom and now you're trying to relearn I, and I think my father said it best when I started my career uh it was at the at the start of the the laptop, right? So I was replacing my laptop and my phone every 6 months and he said you're going to become the most tech technical advanced bankrupt guy in the industry because wow. you spend more you you spend more time learning your new computer, learning your new phone, learn he says keep the same thing for a while until you can use it. And some of the most successful people that I know in esports and you can look them up They've had the same computer all the time I've known them the last 8 or 9 years. They just go and they up, update their Acer and do whatever they need to do and they create some of the the world's biggest games in that industry, right? Like they they just do sports games, right? And every time I sit down with him, he has the same computer. And that's what's happening now. Nice. I mean, people are just going and jumping on a new iPhone and and even iPhone knew that was going to happen because now you just buy a a new iPad or a new i uh a tablet or a new anything Apple and you have one program and you wake up in the morning and everything's a mirror image of your old laptop. So now you don't have to worry about that, right? So that's what I'm doing. I have two laptops and they have exactly the same thing, right? So what's happening with me is that I'm looking at things that are going to be the future, kind of like a farmer and we don't have a farmers automatic for for this industry for none of these industries that we're talking about and i mean if you operate like a farmer a farmer needs to have structure to have success and that success comes in different times you have crops that that grow in 6 weeks and you have crops that germinate in 6 weeks so i mean you you kind of have to have a structure and i think what's happening right now in the entertainment industry uh, specifically gaming and esports think people think that you see you plant something you sow something and it grows in 2 or 3 weeks it doesn't what yeah. doesn't work like that and bitcoin didn't work like that netflix didn't work like that i mean netflix was started in 1998 or 1997 people think netflix is new netflix is not new netflix is popular now uh -huh. fortnite Fortnite was started in the late 90s. People think that Fortnite is new. Fortnite is not new. So I mean, 
we have to kind of change the narrative and get investors because we're talking about investors to think about the long term like amazon amazon is not new amazon's been around for 20 years amazon is probably older than some of the young guys on this panel so i mean these things are not new the aviation industry is not new i like the newer planes better they're more quiet they do a lot of other things but i mean the thing is not new so i mean we have to get we have to our downfall as an investor is to invest and watch trending don't invest in what's trending invest in what the trend is going to produce and that's going to produce a lot of things and eventually there's going to become there's going to there's going to come a time where netflix is not going to be that thing where you just scroll 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 forever it's going to there's going to be an app that says hey i like these movies and it's going to go find us and schedule your movies for you because i mean it's just not human to just run around from minute to minute okay like okay what is sunny going to do after she finishes this show i don't know probably sunny doesn't know right but we have to schedule this that we have to schedule this call because i mean if i didn't wake up at five o'clock in the morning i would miss the call and the call would have been a thing in the past but the good thing is that i could have gone to youtube in an hour and watched the show and i could watch it in 10 years from now and i can watch it from 20 years from now whatever it's already recorded it, it already became something it, yeah. it's called content right? right how do we control the content creation and how do we control the content consumption? That's the key. So I mean, we're we're, we're focusing on a lot of content creation, but we're not create we're not figuring out how we're going to consume that. So going back to the farmer's analogy, how how many how many cucumbers do we need? How many onions do we need? How many tomatoes do we need? Because tomatoes are popular now, everybody's grown tomatoes, but we forget we need cucumbers and onions as well. So I mean, that's kind of the analogy. So that's what I look at. When I look at investors, I say, where, where, where do you sell this when everybody's trying to sell it? And that's the problem now. Now you can go and find movies pirated and bootleg or whatever. So I mean, Netflix is really not that good because you have other people that are focused on so solely pirating the Netflix movies or the HBO films or the Amazon Prime films or whatever. So I mean, exclusive maybe for the for the guy who's not savvy, but the guy who's savvy can find a movie in any movie in, in two or three minutes. I mean, it's about too much overconsumption, in my opinion. Right. <laughs> or over over content creation. The consumption is still kind of in the air. Oh yeah. I think over content creation, I would agree to that as well, Mark. Thank yeah. you so much for sharing that insights. I'm just a bit wary about the time. Uh would like to go next, Karthik. Let's quickly go with your success parameters and closing remarks, please. So uh, everything that Mark said plus my two cents or one and a half cents rather. Uh, continuum. The industry is about continuum. And, and I'm a very firm believer that while this is a tech enabled business, this is a continuum, which necessarily means it doesn't stop. Most of the people are trying to recreate a Netflix or most of them are trying to create an electronics arts. But that's that's not what we're supposed to be doing. We need to build a continuum. PUBG has shown, the, shown us or for that matter, even Netflix has shown us. It's about the depth and the variety that you could, could bring in very strong artificial intelligence, AI, not AR, VR for that matter, but artificial intelligence, collaborative filtering, content filtering is what Netflix, Amazon, or for that matter, even TikTok today works on, which means tech enabled applications that curate to a very strong degree of hyper personalization is what is required. Along with this, if you try and create or if you try and recreate a Netflix, you're going to put a lot of dollars down the drain. You would rather create allied industries and su bring success in the allied industry, which means create a very strong social based experience, create gamification, go into building in-app purchases, which is where the advertising and marketing dollars are going to come in or create content, which is very, very vernacular. While you don't want to create a streaming medium, what you necessarily need to create for success is go into downstream industries, which is content creation, vernacular, content development, content translation, content censorship, all of this and, and, and a lot more. So that, that's for me, success of this is about building continuity and building uh, allied features or allied industries around it. That's, that's how right. I look at it. Thank you. Thank you so much. You. Uh, so let's quickly go to, with uh, Kingsley, Lance, and Tushar. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys very much. Uh, well, uh, a lot of graphics, better graphics are going to be needed. Graphics when it, when it comes to gaming, 
uh, when it comes to esports and movies, we, we don't need a lot of uh, better content, uh, better structuring, like Max said. Uh, not just uh, hit and run. I'm gonna make one movie. I'm gonna make more than and then what? You know. So we have to look deeper into uh, what we're investing into. Yes, gaming media has gone up very well, especially in India. India is, India is leading when it comes to gaming. Uh, in what right now and uh half of their population is under 25 and that is a population of the millennials and the gen z's yes i see why they're making a lot in that space and a lot of money is coming out of that space for them it's, it's, not, it's not a bad business so but how do we marry these projects together is what i think about now you have project a project b project c they all have okay these have content these have good graphics these have good structure how do you marry them together why can't they come together and work together as one we as investors have the the opportunity to talk to each and every one of them we can make it better for you you know mr a yeah. has the graphic mr b has the content mr c has the structure why don't we marry this business together and make it better so that we have better content we have better uh, graphic and we have better market for it you know uh, then it's affordable because right now some of them are too expensive. But when it becomes affordable to everybody, then it becomes meaningful to the society. If we just for the few pledge ones and non pledge ones, then we have a problem. There has to be a balance. So the, the, the truth is, I, I, I go with the farm uh, analogy that you do not you do, you do not clear grass around a mango tree that will not produce. Right? If you know this mango tree, tree is not going to produce fruit why go and walk around it every day you, you, that, 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 that is not what, what we do so we have to structure it in yeah. a way that we are able to bring them together and then invest in them together it's okay you guys work together for a better future so that's that's what i think you all, you all know how to, how to get it in touch with me. so yeah totally in the lines of marketing okay. uh, yeah. structure has to be brought so that's a lot of content there content and we have to structure those content um, Lance and Tushar, Lance, uh, over to you with your uh, remarks. Uh, I mean, with this, uh, what's the insights of the success parameters and the closing remarks, Lance and then Tushar. Sure. Um, thanks, guys. Um, I think Kingsley and Mark covered it really, really well uh, in the sense that um, you need to really, really have structure because today um, everything is so unstructured and we need yeah. people to figure out how to put things together, how to integrate things together. And more importantly, to create a kind of ecosystem. Yeah. How do you create an ecosystem around your product? How do you create an ecosystem around your services? How do you create an ecosystem as investors? How do we create an ecosystem around our portfolio? I think that would be something that um, the top performers um, of tomorrow, at least in these um, sectors, will need to think about how do we create... Uh, I think it's no longer a case of product or service play. It's going to be... Um, definitely the ecosystem play um, from here on out. Um, we have seen many super apps uh, that are trying to trying to grow. Um, yeah. And how, the reason why they command such a high valuations today is because they can create a kind of ecosystem around them. So I think, uh, especially for media play, especially for um, people in gaming, esports, I think you need a very, very strong ecosystem vision down the road um and a good enough incredible enough plan to execute to that point where you can create a kind of ecosystem around you so um those are just my thoughts uh my 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 once what uh, one sense worth of um thoughts uh, on top of what uh, the other panelists have shared so uh yeah happy to connect over linkedin yeah so just let me know cheers Thank you, Lance. I think you're right. Ecosystem is very important as well for sustainability, besides having bringing in a structure. Very rightly said. Thank you so much. And yes, thanks for your participation today. Uh, Tushar? Yeah, uh, Sunny. So uh, media and entertainment, uh, you know, in India per se has been, uh, some parts have been going up, some parts have been going down. So, uh, so video on demand uh, is up. Live streaming is up, uh, print media is down, and uh, anything consumed over the smartphone is up. Uh, and uh, intelligent media, which means uh, uh, 
uh, analyzing what people are watching and then serving them targeted advertisements and uh, monetizing that whole uh, data piece uh, that's up uh, and uh, contextual media is up uh, by uh, targeted advertisements and uh, so you know there are a lot uh, many pieces to this uh, on the ott side uh, currently you know as we speak uh, to, uh, the two of the companies which are into regional ott are uh, talking and we are talking about uh, how to uh, enable them to expand their business and uh, i would welcome uh, all the companies uh, gaming uh, i missed out i mean gaming in india is uh, in term consumption there are 300 million gamers in india and in terms of the average hourly not the average the total hourly consumption we have overtaken the us so you know that's the kind of uh, kind of depth uh, gaming has in india so uh, you know at consultancy ventures we enable companies across uh, consulting across uh, content across getting them fund access to funding getting them business so uh, you know i am available on linkedin uh, to shar consul at consultancy ventures and happy to be on the show and uh, very interesting discussion today thank you sunny and thank you vcd thank you thank you tushar thank you everybody thank you mark thank you kingsley and thank you, thank you mark CTV. Thanks, guys. I hope to see you back again. And for the viewers, please don't miss other episodes of VCTV, and you'll uh, get a chance to meet the speakers all over again. Till then, um, stay safe, stay connected. I'm going to see you again on another episode of VCTV. Bye bye. Bye.